Very good. Welcome, everybody, to the regular Board of Ed meeting. We just wrapped up a curriculum meeting, if public um, open curriculum meeting, if you're wondering what the meeting was in, going on before you walked in the room. Um, so just quickly, let me go through some housekeeping items. In accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1979 announcement, I wish to announce that the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the School District of the Chatham Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, place thereof posted at the Board Administrative Offices, sent to the clerks of the Chatham Borough and Chatham Township, the Library of the Chathams, the Chatham Courier, the Daily Record, and the Star Ledger. Mr. DeCola, would you mind doing a roll call? Mr. Gilbert. Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Here. Would everybody stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again for attending. I don't have any uh, opening remarks. Um, I may just go through the standard right before the public commentary. Um, but w with that said, I think I'll roll right into Dr. LaSouza's superintendent report. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Um, just a few uh, items to note. Uh, number one, today we got word that our park scores should be arriving uh, this week. So we're, we're giddy about that. And um, we will... Uh, we're waiting to, to see uh, what, what they have in store. So uh, they've been sent via UPS. They should arrive sometime in the next few days. Then we'll do what we always did with NJASC, of course, and HESPA, which is forward um, one copy of the scores on to parents. So parents should be in receipt, uh, at least at the high school level, um, sometime within the next week or so if they arrive on time. And then uh, the elementary reports will follow um, within a couple of weeks, we think and we'll have availability of downloads um, over the next week or two, depending on the, the grade level. Oh, the downloads so, follow a week later? Uh, the downloads usually are available, uh, we, they were supposed to be available today, to be honest with you, but they were, they were not in Pearson when we went in to get them. Um, so they should be available at any time, but that's for the high school only, today. Okay. And then the rest we'll follow. should follow soon thereafter. Uh, and then we'll be able, once we have the, the scores, we'll be able to um, uh, present the, the data at a board meeting within the next month or two. Within 60 days of when we receive them is when we're supposed to present to the board. Okay, within 60 days of the paper or the down, I assume you need Res the download to do the, the, the crunching that usually goes on. We could do either, we could either way, the downloads are better, um, but we could do either thing because uh, they give us summaries summaries via paper as well. Um, aside from that, uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. We plan to cut over to a new website right after Thanksgiving. We've been working for about a year on replacing the 10-year-old website template that we currently have for the school district. Um, I want to thank Ms. Weber for participating in a, a number of meetings uh, over the course of last year uh, to help us get to a, a more user-friendly, more modern uh, website interface. And we're just about there. We're having some uh, final meetings uh, over the course of the next week or so, but we should be ready to go. So by the time we have our next Board of Education meeting, the district will have a, a newer, fresher website. Uh, I'll remind everyone that the fall play is uh, this coming weekend. I'm sure Ms. Weber will comment on that in her report. And uh, also, of course, we're wrapping up, really wrapping up the fall season. In fact, we've begun the winter season in terms of athletics. Um, and. Uh, our tennis team uh, was both conference and, and county champions, our, our women's tennis team this year. And of course, our football team won a, a big game uh, this past weekend. And we are very excited to host the state playoff football game this coming Saturday. Uh, I'll just remind um, anyone who's listening that alcohol is not permitted on school grounds. And we would expect that students and parents both do not consume uh, before or during the game. Uh, we've had incidents at several home football games this year with students who were uh, extremely ill and um, 
we had to either call the police or an ambulance or parents to retrieve them. So we want to avoid that. This is the biggest game of the year. It should be the most exciting festive time uh, in Chatham for athletics in November that we've seen in a long time. And we just want to make sure everyone's safe and enjoys the, the, the spirited uh, game and contest that we'll see hopefully this weekend. One o'clock, West Essex? Uh, I believe it's one o'clock. I don't have that at my fingertips, though. So. Yep, I think so. One o'clock. Excellent. Any questions for Dr. Lususa? Um, Ms. Clark. I have two things. First of all, um, when the park information goes out to parents, I would hope that the dis administration is putting together some type of informational letter to explain. Yes, we have all that ready to go. Or lack of data. Students <laughs> opted not to participate. And yes, M Ms. Chase has. Uh, has uh, composed a letter that will accompany the score reports. It has links to um, various resources that are available on the Department of Education website and some explanations. And um, we are also working, or she's working, with uh, our directors uh, at the secondary and elementary level uh, that will kind of funnel any phone calls or concerns or questions that people have as they get these new score reports that they haven't uh, ever seen before. Um, and the second thing is about Cougar Field this weekend. Um, I guess it's the opposite side bleachers. I know at Cougar Night there was, a, there was a lot of people on it and there were some concerns. If there's some way we can kind of spread, you know, really look at, there's too many people on there, they can't be on there. I know we can't, but I do fear for the safety of anyone on some of those bleachers. Can we do the if same too thing? many are Walk on it. So I think we need to really look mm -hmm. carefully at the volume of people that are there. I'm sure there'll be a huge turnout and make sure, you know, if we have a maximum number of bleachers, then no more can go on. Or potentially bring in more bleachers like we did for... I mean, I think we have to really be right. careful. Actually, I think that is a great idea, is I think that's going... Hello? I think that's a great idea. You're on. I know that. I think that's a great idea. I think we're all going to... We are going to have a lot of people showing up at the, uh, uh, at the game, both fans of Chatham, and so if... We can bring the uh, extra stands. I think that'd be a terrific idea. If there is a concern about the safety of the bleachers, then I think we should have somebody at the, you're talking about the visitor side? Yeah. yeah. Then we should have possibly somebody there and say, okay, so many people, but we will need extra bleachers because I think there's gonna be a heck of a turnout. Well, that's because they made it the student, they made that the student section on Cougar Day, which so. we all know what they're all doing, jumping up and down. I don't know if that's the best spot for they did that for the soccer game, but for the football game, we, um, right. Mr. Villabrera wrote go up a bunch of yes. or he doubled essentially the student section, which I think worked out very well. And he actually had a lot of the seniors kind of monitor that, and it seemed to work out well. I think Michelle is talking about the bleachers on the other side. Yes. Right, I think yeah. Either way, we need for the soccer game during Cougar Night, they made that the student the section, students so the entire over. visiting oh. side was all students. Right. And it was way more people on those bleachers than. Yeah, that's why I think you should have a limit and then have the extra. <clears throat> Uh, bleaches. Can we? Can that be done? We have them. I know they're behind the high school, right? We well, we have. We've already brought a number of bleachers down there. Um, we can see if we're able to move more. The ones behind the high school are larger than the uh, than the ones we brought down there for Cougar Weekend. So I, I have to. We have to check with John Cataldo and see what what's doable. Uh, we can certainly limit the number of people who can sit in the bleachers by having a security monitor then we have to uh, put at the entrance. That, Mike, you know. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Dr. Lususa? Nope. None. Mr. DeCola, moving on to business, business administrator's report. The only update I have is just to report that the Morris County freeholders finally approved the phase two of the Morris County solar project. Uh, this is good news for Chatham because uh, part of the project includes solar panels on top of the high school roof. Um, this has been something that has been in the works for over five years, so I have to go back and review the particulars, but uh, I know the county will be contacting us and the county will be doing all of the engineering and the installation work. And the Finance and Facility Committee has um, final approval and they'll review to make sure that what was promised five years ago is still the case? We will get a, we will get a new scope and get to review it. Okay. So it's, they're just not going to come in one day and install. No. Finance and facilities will review it, look it yeah. over. Okay. Thank you. Because it hit the paper on Sunday. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Spool? 
Seeing none at this time, moving on. Um, or we'll do our committee reports first. Ms. Clark for personnel. Yep. Um, personnel met last Monday, uh, the 9th. And um, <coughs> we talked about a couple of issues. Most importantly, was um, staffing for our human resource. Oh, sorry. For our human resource department, um, we were looking mm -hmm. at replacing a vacancy and also talked about need for additional staff to support um, the needs of that area of our central office. Um, another great thing that we discussed was the wellness initiative for our staff and teachers here in Chatham, um, the success of the Professional Development Day on October 12th, um, and how the teachers had options to participate in wellness and mindfulness activities um, to help with their stress reduction, to increase their productivity at work, and to hopefully increase their own personal wellness. And um, the reception was overwhelmingly positive from the staff. And, um, I was really interested to hear the feedback from all levels. It was very, very positive, and hopefully this is something that we can continue to support our teachers with going forward. Thank you for your efforts. That's great. And Beth, you have another one planned in the spring? Is that, or not yet, not until? Oh, okay. I jumped the gun on that. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Michelle? No, nope. seeing none. Moving on to curriculum, Ms. Kenny. Yes, uh, the curriculum committee met uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, Kristen Crawford, uh, who is the K-12 science supervisor, did a presentation for us on the next generation science standards. Uh, the complete presentation is, on the, is already on the district website, and for anyone who's interested, it was also videotaped. So that'll be up um, along with this board meeting. Any questions? So if somebody says they weren't told about the new standards, we're talking about, we're starting a conversation now. There's new standards coming, they could be reviewed. November 15th, right now. Sorry. <laughs> Finance and facilities, Mr. Gilfillan? Yes, we met uh, November 11th for a short meeting. Uh, the entire focus was around the potential outlook and in, in, um, time frame for the uh, next referendum basically continue to break down, looking at the public feedback in terms of uh, what we feel is most demand uh, from um, the parents who replied to the, uh, the survey. Uh, we continue to look at what we believe are the pieces of, of the um, previous referendum that will garner the most support and will also have the most impact on um, the school district the big issue is also going to be timing as to whether or not we can get something through by either the March date or have to focus more on the September date, um, September 2016, uh, to bring this referendum to a vote. And that's all we did. So, Matt, what's the next steps? I mean, you're making recommendations tonight or on, uh, you're not ready to mm -hmm. yeah, recommend to the full board yet? We have, we, I think, in essence, we thought we were almost ready to come with a recommendation to the full board. However, there were some things that arose late in terms of um, additional support or, 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 or wants um, that we needed to take a step back and evaluate further. Okay. I personally don't think, this is a personal opinion, I don't think we will be able to get something through by the March time frame and would have to more focus on the September 2016 time frame to move this forward. And the biggest reason being is that, you know, right now we're at a, a perspective of what we're evaluating, we're really focused on things that were north of 50% pu of public support. Um, and we're trying to um, look at each one of them individually and evaluate what we believe is will have the most impact and what will not. And, and during the discussions, um, and we can talk about it more at board business if you prefer, but during the discussions, do we know at this time how much state aid will receive back or We'd have to go out with the full number and then... We can make, I think we can make actually very good guesstimates based upon what we received from the previous referendum and kind of extrapolate that across anything new. Uh, the only thing additionally we would have to take a look at would be the potential for additional classrooms along the elementary, which we did not do last time, so we could probably make some guesstimates associated with that. Um, but we have, a, I think, a decent feel of what we would get. We have the four classrooms, right? Well, I think we know that number. Or we knew it at that time. Yeah, we did? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I stand corrected. And they qualified. Yeah. yeah, I know they qualified, but I just didn't know if we had an actual, actual figure. There's a lot of others we had actual figures. Yeah. So, 
so from a timeline point of view, the next finance meeting is either December 7th or December 9th, I can't recall, but it's the 9th. So do you think by December 9th we'll ha have a more robust discussion at the board level I, after yes, finance? Yes, I think we'll, have a more, we'll have, definitely have a more robust discussion. Uh, I think the discussion is going to be pure, is going to be more focused on what we move forward with in terms of picking out of, out of uh, the projects that we want to undertake. Um, I don't think we'll be at that point saying we should try to push this to the point whereby we get it done in March. And no, 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 I'm not suggesting. I'm just anxious to have the conversation at the board level, that's all. We I'm should, on be, the, we I'm should not be done finance. by next time, don't you think? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Rich? Yeah, I think. Yeah, because yeah. I thought we were pretty much there. I actually yeah, thought we were. We had the one issue. Uh, but I, I think, think we'll be in a position to answer your question, Joe. We will the be in a position as a, as a committee to give the next time. a okay. our recommendation December next 9th. meeting. So yeah. when's the next uh, public meeting? December, December 7th. Oh, December 7th. So, then, so the uh, finance happens on the 9th, so it would not happen until January. As we do it the 7th? Can we can do the 7th at 6.30? Yeah, can we can switch? Yeah, that'd be yeah. 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 The, the policy us, meeting? Yeah. Sorry, Phil. <laughs> yeah, can you put us at 6.30? It's um, personnel on 12.7. So we can swap personnel with finance uh, the Monday to Wednesday. Oh, happy birthday. Uh, it's Michelle's birthday. She's not coming on the night. <laughs> it's all right. I don't blame you. So I'm December 7th. So December 7th. So December. It is my birthday. No. Well, this will give us an opportunity then to I talk about it so as a full board yes. that yes. evening mm -hmm. instead of waiting another month. So December 7th, we're going to have the finance and then at 6.30 and then we'll have the board meeting at 7.30. Okay. Correct. Happy birthday in case I don't see you. There is a, there's already a policy meeting on the 9th, so maybe you're all going to go together, Michelle. No, I'm not on I know. So we can't uh, part. We'll work out for a family meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So you're comfortable, Matt, with that timeline? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So everybody come with your, be prepared to receive a recommendation from the Finance and Facilities Committee. Not that we're making a decision that night, but we're going to have a much more robust conversation about the recommendations okay. and alternatives and how they're presented. Yeah. So thank you to the Finance and Facility Committee for working through that and uh, providing us with numbers. Uh, Matt, do you think you'll have guesstimates or, or high-level swatches of, of state aid so we, we have a better idea of what the dollar figure it is? Or no, not I until February? I don't think in the end we'll have any of that information until we actually go through the architect aspect of it. So we can have, we're going to utilize rough guesstimates based upon what we received in the last referendum that should give okay. us a high quality indication. But again, don't forget, Fair enough. when we go through forward with the referendum, you have your headline figure and then you have your net figure. So we'll still have a headline figure of X with a net figure of X minus. But we can communicate both. Yeah, I was going to say, let's right. assume so that on the 7th we have yeah. All the, all the information. Or at least... Well, yeah, we'll have round figures on yeah. that. Yeah. <coughs> I agree. Okay. So your, your recommendations... Okay, we'll look forward to that. I'm going to stop on that topic. Does anybody have any questions for Matt on anything finance facilities related? No? Matt, were you done with your report? I'm done, yeah. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, policy and planning, Mr. Franz? Uh, we did meet since the last meeting, a uh, very quick, very quiet meeting uh, on the items covered later tonight on the agenda, uh, passive breath alcohol sensor device, and use of facilities, i.e. field. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Franz on policy or planning related items? Or redoing his schedule and his future? Nope. Are plus. That's right. All righty, moving on to liaison reports. Mr. Connors for Chatham Borough. Nothing to report on behalf of the borough. Thank you. Ms. Clark? Nothing reported from the township. Back to you, Mr. Connors, on the athletic boosters. Uh, athletic boosters has not met since our last meeting. They are the first or the eighth is the next one. The second? The first, yeah. Uh, well, so since, Tuesday, December 1st? Yes. Uh, I'm hoping since I see the president and vice president of the boosters here that they're going to stand up and tell us what a great job they did during Cougar Night and will also possibly explain, provide some information regarding the basketball tournament over the Christmas holiday and uh, what that's all about and give us an update. Barney, turnabout is fair play since you gave me a chance to talk at the last booster meeting. I'm going to expect you to do the same. Uh, and again, I would urge I'm not just doing it because you two are here again. More people to support the boosters. They do a terrific job for Chatham Athletics. 
They provide a tremendous amount of money and support for all the programs across the board, and we were fortunate to have the president and vice president in this in the audience today. That's it. Excellent. Looking Thank you. Looking forward to it, Barney. Thank you, Mr. Connors. Um, music and theater boosters, I'm going to read that off. So the um, Chatham High School All-State Orchestra and the Mixed Chorus members performed at NJ Pack yesterday afternoon to a sold-out audience. And in February, the All-State Women's Choir and the All-State Band will perform at the NJ Pack. The Chatham High School Honors Music Fall Recital took place this afternoon at Chatham High School. And it was in the, held in the music wing. We have 17 students currently involved in the honors program and it's instrumentals and vocalists and they perform solo works to hopefully a very supportive audience of peers and staff members. Um, the honors music program is a, is a very competitive um, class that the kids have to audition for and they audition for it in the June of the, of the previous year and it's juniors and seniors mostly. Um, but throughout the, the year they have to perform two solo recitals after re research papers, participate in competitive um, honors ensembles and they also have to compete a hands-on project com combining their interest with music with the community. So they may have to um, host a musical event at a, at a venue or a church and they have to run the whole thing from the marketing to the, to, you know, the seating arrangements and, and, and any aspect, all logistics. So it combines the, their, their discipline as well as community outreach. So it's really a great program, but it's very competitive. The next recital, I believe, is sometime in the spring, which is open to the public and it's fantastic. So if you have a chance and you see it on the calendar, if you can pop in on their spring recital, it's really fantastic. Many of these students, if you've listened to my report over the years, many of them have already played Lincoln Center, Washington Center, Carnegie Hall. It's just amazing the talent that these kids have. Uh, moving on to the marching band, they're celebrating a successful competitive season. Uh, tonight is their annual awards banquet, so congratulations to the high school band. The Chatham High School uh, fall play is called Look Homeward Angel. It will be performed this weekend, Friday, Saturday night at 7.30 at the high school auditorium. There is also a senior citizens performance on Thursday that was sold out, as it always is every year. The dinner will be served by student volunteers from the National Honor Society and the cast and crew will mingle amongst the, uh, the, the senior citizens and uh, answer any questions and maybe just have nice to open dialogue. The Southern Boulevards schools Hope Week activities will culminate this uh, Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving, November 25th. It's an all-building sing of We Are the World, featuring the SBS staff members singing the verses and the K-3 students performing the chorus. I look forward to seeing the video of that. The event will be led by um, Southern Boulevard music teacher Tracy Rossman. They will videotape that, right? The Chatham High School Choral Program will host the Regional One Choral Festival on Tuesday, December 1st in the auditorium. This is nine uh, courses from northern New Jersey. We'll travel to the high school for adjudication by some of the top collegiate choral uh, faculty members. Um, that is generally not open to the public because they're being, um, they're being graded and there's a lot of lessons after the adjudicators go up and have discussions with each of the musicians and have one-on-one -on -one almost uh, clinics. It's, uh, I've peeked in on it a couple times. It's really quite interesting. The third grade chorus members from Milton, Milton Southern and Washington Avenue schools will do a combined effort and perform for the Ch at the Chatham Christmas tree lighting on the steps of the public library on Saturday, December 5th. They will be performing selections from their holiday concerts and the combined chorus will be co-directed by Veronica Shaw and Tracy Rossman. And if you would just um, mark your calendars, this holiday, the, the performing arts calendar is on the district website. I'm sure none of you have any questions about that, but see me after if you do. Uh, Chatham Education Foundation, Ms. Kenny? Uh, yes, uh, Saturday night, um, the Chatham Education Foundation held its third annual trivia night, and um, I'd like to proudly announce that our combined Board of Ed and Administration team came in third place overall. Bronze. Yes. <laughs> Out of like 57 teams. Yes, yeah, so we're uh, very excited and uh, determined that I watch too much late night television. That's and right. <laughs> and Miss um, Chase sees a lot of movies. Yeah, and Miss Chase sees a lot of movies. And, and, reads, a lot. Lot. and, and reads a lot. And reads a lot. And reads a lot, which is good. Um, but it was a fun night and I uh, would like to thank the Chatham Education Foundation for all the work that they do in terms of all its fundraising and the terrific um, support they give our students and our teachers in the, for the programs. Um, that they uh, support, uh, that they provide for. So thank you, everyone. We have to mention who won again. Just oh, is it uh, is it the Blarney Stone? It was uh, by the uh, yeah, second, second, year. Second, second year. Second year in a row. They did. Uh, they 
it was a very uh, slim victory because we were very close. It was a narrow margin, but you have to give them their due. They won again. Yes, and they came uh, with a lot of spirit and a lot of... So I have to say, next year, if we were to do it again, we do need to step up our uh, costumes. So that seems to really... Uh, we need to step up our, our costumes and ditch one of our members for a science expert. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care who we ditch. Somebody's got to go, and a science guy's got to come in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, I, 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 I just heard that there's alcohol served in these things. There uh, is. It's a, there's a. Uh, um, uh, now I'm going to interested in it. Yeah. There's a. Yeah. Twice. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Kenny. I appreciate it. Um, recreation, Mr. Nonamaker is not here. Uh, PTO District Cabinet, Ms. Cronin. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so I guess I talked about park uh, and waiting the results. Um, and they also talked about student issues related to technology use, sleep, and stress. Is there anything else you would like to add? No? That's it. And how did these sleep, stress, and... <laughs> we talked about that the last time also. Yeah, no, it went well. I, the the, that it biggest, the, that the largest request um, was probably that we continue to focus on uh, proper technology use and digital footprints and okay. try to expose as many kids to the proper use of technology at as early an age as possible. Okay. And some of the conversation just revolved around the kinds of devices and social media applications that kids are using um, at very young ages and what we can do as a district to try to uh, help guide them in the appropriate use of those okay. platforms. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, seeing no additional conversation on that, um, I make a motion to pass the public session minutes of November 2nd. Second. And uh, November 11th, public and executive session. Second. Mr. DeQuilla, would you mind doing a roll call and letting us know who sure. must abstain? Um, for the 11 two minutes, which is the regular session, uh, Ms. Clark is the only one that needs to abstain. Okay. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 I have to abstain. I thought I recorded it. Why are we We're just letting you know. On November 11th? The two extensions. Well, actually, the one extension we needed to get this part. The 11 11 regular and executive session for the city of uh, yes. Ms. Chigarelli. Yes. Ms. Clark. Abstain. Ms. Connor. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Grant. Yes. Ms. Kenny. Yes. And Ms. Weber. Yes. Again, past 701. Excellent. Thank you. We have our first opportunity for public commentary. If you wouldn't mind, um, the microphone is on this side of the room. If you would sign in and introduce yourself. If you could limit your comments to a reasonable amount of time, that would be great just to give everybody an opportunity to speak. Mr. Barnett is going to rush to the microphone, <laughs> and Ms. Clark, if you would just sign in and introduce yourself or self, that would be great. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rob Barnett. I am the current president of the Chatham High School Athletic Boosters. Uh, just give you a quick update on how things are going for uh, the boosters so far this year. Uh, we made it through Cougar Weekend, I think, pretty smoothly. Uh, the only, I guess negative thing that we had. We had a 45 minute shower which kind of rained out the girls soccer match. We were able to reschedule for Thursday. It wasn't Cougar weekend but it was still we were able to have the event and uh, I think that satisfied uh, some of the parents of the girls soccer team. Uh, Fundraising has been doing we've been doing a fantastic job. All the numbers are up over the prior year in terms of money we've raised and it leads us to our next big event which will be the 11th annual Cougar Classic over Christmas break. I think it's December 26th to the 30th. Unsure of the teams, but uh, every year we pick a, a local benefactor, and this year we've selected the John Taylor Babbitt Foundation as our benefactor. Uh, one, because the Babbitts have been longtime Chatham residents, and they've done a tremendous job at uh, getting information out to the public regarding uh, defibrillators, as well as donating tremendous number of defibrillators throughout the state of New Jersey. So we thought that that was a worthy recipient and uh, they'll be the, you know, we're going to hopefully raise a lot of money for them uh, at the Cougar Classic. Uh, the last thing we want to talk about is, you know, echoing, I guess, on the comments earlier, uh, 
this weekend, this football game, it's going to be bigger than Cougar weekend. I mean, it's going to be a tremendous amount of people there, both from Chatham, as well as West Essex, as well as Cranford, who is likely going to play the winner of this game, because they play Friday night. So there's going to be a lot of interest. I've already spoken to Bill Labrera about maybe additional police, because the parking situation is going to be really bad. Uh, I told him maybe we can encourage students to park at the high school and walk down Pine. Uh, it is a day game, so I think we have less of an issue with light. Uh, and we're going to try to pre-sell tickets in advance just to kind of make the strain on the, the gate uh, go a little smoother because a lot of times in typical Chatham fashion, we get a lot of people that just show up five minutes before the game and expect to get in, and, you know, there's just a line. Uh, the Cougar passes will not work because this is a state playoff game, so everybody will have to be charged admission. So uh, any benefactors to the boosters that have the cards, they won't work, so everybody's going to have to pay. And then uh, the last thing, I just want to thank the Board of Ed and especially Bill Labrera and John Cataldo for their help at Cougar. Uh, prior to Cougar weekend, they did a lot of uh, improvements uh, to some of the asphalt, as well as, you know, prettying up uh, the, the parking lot and just making things look a little more presentable, which we really appreciate. You know, they painted the, the locker room as well as the snack shack. And I know, unfortunately, we had a little vandalism in the last couple weeks, but you know, we do appreciate the work that John and his staff does for the boosters and the sports teams here at Chatham. So with that, I'll pass it to Tracy. Oh, Barney, just real quick, how are you going to purchase oh. the tickets online? Uh, I think Bill's going to work something through oh, okay. the school. We're, okay. I don't know how he's going to do it with the, the community at large, but I know in the high school, at least if you can get the students to kind of pre-sell, oh, okay. that'll be Very good. You know, a lot of it. But I, he was going to, I know he had to liaise with the state as to how okay. this all works because I guess they have their own tickets and got it. Okay. You know, so. Well, more to follow. Before we sit down, Mike, is there a chance, Dr. Lasuza, to get a uh, police? Uh, I think we should have it not only in additional police at the game, but your, your point is well taken, Barney, with regard to police possibly helping people get in and out. Uh, I think that request would probably carry a little more juice coming from the superintendent. Yes, we're all over the police. Lots of police, and it, like at Cougar, Cougar weekend, we had a, okay. more police than we usually do, including up and, and beyond the field, up on Shunpike and sure. other spots. And Bonnie, just getting back to that, the fundraiser for the uh, Christmas, the John Babbitt people here, some of them are pretty young, may not be aware of who and who, who are the Babbitts and, and the loss that they suffered and their son died and how they turned that into a positive by donating tremendous amount of time and money to do exactly uh, with regard to the uh, defibrillator. So uh, it's a tremendous cause, it's local, but the family has been incredible. You lose your child, and what they've done is, is try to turn that into a positive. Uh, and it's amazing what they've done. They're incredible people, and please support it as best you can. And thank you. No, thank you. Could I say one of the West Essex is very big on, they will have a lot of fans here. Oh, yeah, that's what they I mean. It's going to be a big crowd. Tons, of, yeah. So if Bill can also sell through their high school, because they, yeah. have, they have a very big fan base that travels with it. Yeah, that's so. what I mean. I mean, it's going to be bigger than it's Cougar gonna Weekend. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, I don't know if there's a limitation on the amount of people that you can have in there, but it, oh, it's going to be a fans. lot. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Bonnie. Okay. Yep, thank you, good. See you on the first. Okay. I just wanted to put you at ease that I spoke to John Cataldo and he knows he has uh, full staff on getting the field ready. So it will hopefully be as pristine or more pristine than it was for Cougar Weekend and all the facilities. And I guess echoing on that, the vandalism, has that been cleaned up? I mean, because that was, you know, pretty, that, we don't want that in our, any, like, that is all. That is all been all been taken care of. If you go there, unless you are specifically digging, you'll find no evidence. Good. Mike, can you also send our noise policy in terms of noise makers and things like that to from Mr. Rivera to their AD just to give them a, a heads up in terms of what our policy is that you know no horns, no whatever those tuba things are, whatever that goes Air on. Yeah. 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 Their horns, those cowbells. I think we're off on. Soccer horns. <laughs> yes, I will, and we do prepare to search, you know, bags and uh, confiscate bottles and everything else as people walk in. I talked with the high school about that today. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barnett. <laughs> Hello, board. We haven't seen each other in a while. Uh, Barney got to say all the nice stuff. 
Um, but I do want to echo his comments because working with Bill and working with John, my name is Tracy Ness. I live at 31 Jeffrey Court in Chatham Township, and I'm the vice president of the Athletic Boosters. And I have signed in. Um, so I do want to echo the comments made because working with Bill and working with John has been really wonderful. The proactiveness that they've taken um, with regards to Cougar Field, uh, to Cougar Field this year has been wonderful to see. The painting, the trimming of the trees, the straightening out of the parking lot, all of that has been really wonderful, and it's been great working with them, especially John's staff, too, uh, who have come up to us at Cougar Weekend and before and asked us what we need and what can they can do and do we need more tables. It's really been a big pleasure, uh, especially with the success of the season. Um, everybody has kind of caught the excitement of it. Um, one of the reasons why I'm here tonight is um, I stood before you four years ago when this very team uh, made it to the Super Bowl for the first time in the history of Chatham. And at that time, we talked about the noise ordinance and um, what the limits were going to be placed on that Super Bowl when we hosted the Super Bowl with regards to um, the amplified sound during the morning, then it was going to be, you know, none, none before 10 o'clock, before 12. It was this whole rolling thing. And, and uh, you know, it caused a lot of upset because people were there to hear their kids, hear their kids' names being called. It was history making for Chatham. So I'm here again tonight, four years later, to really talk about the same subject. For the first time in 30 years, Chatham is going to the state semifinals, and we're hosting. And on the best of days, when you have a crowd like Cougar Weekend, you can't hear anything. And it's sad for the players, for the parents who have suffered through these past four years, especially the two years when we moved into the new conference and we won nothing and we were praying for a score high enough so that the running clock would kick in and we could all go home. And we improved by winning three games last year and now we're making tremendous strides with tremendous support and tremendous excitement that has led us to this game. Uh, and the gods are looking fondly upon us and we're actually going to have a home game. We are expecting enormous crowds, as I'm sure you're all aware of and has been talked about tonight. West Essex does have a huge crowd base. The Cougar Nation has come out in droves. Kids are coming. Well, the sixth grade team just made it to the Super Bowl. So all of the rec kids are all coming. There's going to be a tremendous amount of people there. And as I said, on the best of days, you can barely hear what's being announced. With the crowd that are going to be there, it's going to be virtually impossible to hear anything that's announced. So for two reasons, I ask you tonight to consider taking the volume above what it is at now, which is three, um, maybe a five, if we get a little crazy, so that people can actually hear what's being said. Not only the statement that's read about harassment, intimidation, and bullying, the policy that has to be read before each game, but also their kids' names announced as they're walking onto the field, how the plays go, who's making the tackle, who's made the touchdown, um, and for the fans' enjoyment uh, in, in the hearing that. You cannot hear on the opposite side of the field at all. Barely hear in our stand. There's also a safety factor here, because the last time that we had a home game, uh, we had issues and we had large crowds. Uh, we had issues with people who were parking where they weren't supposed to park, which would not enable people to get out in a timely fashion of the parking lot were there to be an issue or for an ambulance to get in. We couldn't, we tried to make those announcements. We tried to say the person in the blue car with license plate, blah, 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 please go to but what ended up happening is that the police had to go into the crowds. The police had to go across the stands. They had to try and shout into the stands and fish people out. And given the crowds that we're going to have this, this uh, weekend, we certainly don't want that to ha happen either. So I ask you for two reasons. One, to let the people enjoy it, to let the people hear their kids' names being read out, to let the people hear the plays being called. And secondly, because we are expecting so many crowds from a safety standpoint, because an announcement that would be made concerning safety, parking, welfare, if there's an emergency, no one's going to hear it. So I ask you to consider the 
enormity of what's going to happen this weekend, the 30-year lapse of us not making it to a state game, the chances of that happening again, uh, and I ask you to reconsider allowing an exemption or looking into what the ordinance actually says to allow us to be able to uh, use our existing PA system and have act people actually hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I think, you know, I'm just going to comment since it's so fresh. The, I, I think we're limited by statute, and Mr. DeQuilla will correct me if I misstep. Uh, Ms. Ness is, is not understating how poor that sound system is. You cannot hear. I distinctly remember the Randolph game at the beginning of last year. We were doing a moment of silence for the um, the Randolph students had died that summer in a car accident, could not hear a thing. People on the Randolph side were just talking through because they had no idea what we were even doing. You cannot hear a single thing at that field. Unless you're directly under the speaker next to the press box, you're not hearing anything. So I know it's bad, but Mr. DeQuilla, you'll remind <coughs> us now of the... The sound system has been calibrated in order to be in compliance with the sound ordinance and not to exceed 65 decibels. So unfortunately, the volume is set and cannot be changed without the district uh, breaking the law. So unfortunately, the sound system needs to stay the way it is. If you Hi. could introduce yourself and where you're from. Yes. Uh, my name is Jocelyn Cahoon. I'm from 40 Barnsdale, Madison, which is a couple of properties down from where the scoreboard is at Cougar Field. Um, I'd like to say that we are very much in favor of maintaining the decibel level the way it is. Um, we can hear the announcements perfectly fine inside our house um, when all the games are going on. Um, they, this year, they have been much more compliant with that decibel level, and we thank you for that. Um, we do not want that turned up any louder. Um, we already hear the announcements inside our house as it is with the windows closed. So. Um, I encourage that to stay the same. And we have noticed that there has been more use with lights at the fields just lately that I thought was not quite per spec either, but they were removed. So I don't know whether there's plans to use the um, temporary lighting more. This, what's left of the, I guess there's not much left of the season now, but are there plans to use the temporary lights more than were used last year? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Are, are there plans to use the temporary lights more than they were used in not this, this fall, season? But we'll use them as safety requires, but not this fall. Okay. But right. As safety requires, we will use the lights. W within the policy use? Within our policy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy Nass again. I have a follow-up question. We've been to many towns uh, that have, have been surrounded by homes uh, and football, you know, where there's f football fields, and there is music playing and it's festive. Ting tinkles blowing and hoo hooers hooing and all sorts of things going on. And is it just the fact that a few residents are not? in favor of the fact that they live near a football field and that there's football being played and so send and complaints to the health officer or is it that all of these towns that we go to that have football facilities in the midst of neighborhoods are breaking the law but the other people find enjoyment in it or let it alone because it's only five or six games during the year. It could be a combination of factors. Um, I can tell you that, like Mr. DeQuilla said, the current sound settings were done with the local health department with a calibrator at the property line uh, after a host of complaints about the sound levels. And we set the, the max volume to comply with, it's a state ordinance, a state law, if I'm not mistaken, about decibel, uh, maximum de decibel levels. I think our sound system is, uh, it's outdated, it's very poor. I don't know when it was installed, probably 20, 30 years ago or more. Um, that it's a, it's a target for us in terms of referendum discussions, both last year and this year. 
that's part of the problem, I'm sure, uh, because a modern sound system would not necessarily be located on top of the scoreboard or directed in the same uh, direction that the, the current sound system is. Um, and I can't speak for other towns in terms of what they uh, faced with complaints from residents uh, or what their advice was from their attorney, but I do know in our case, after a, a number of complaints, we did we did set the system uh, in compliance with the, the local health department. And what happens when that goes above that decibel level? Then there would be complaints and the, the police would come. And then and what then happens? It would be, well, uh, either, uh, it, historically we've always complied with what the police tell us we need to do. Uh, if the Board of Education or the administration deliberately disobeyed the uh, law enforcement, I imagine we'd be served a fine. Well, my, I guess my, my problem with this is that we, like I said, we go to so many fields that are, so I guess all of them are just breaking the law, but just nobody gets, They're nobody reports it. They're outside our jurisdiction, it. for They're sure. They're outside your jurisdiction, right. right. The scope ends at that double set of doors. My <laughs> concern, though, is also one of safety. Sure. Does that have any sort of overriding issue when we're going to have so many people there and the inability to make an announcement um, because as you said, when we were trying to do the moment of silence, the Randolph fans, most unfortunately on the other side of the field, had no idea what we were saying uh, in the visitor's stands. Um, and it was very sad. We had to have somebody run over there and say to them, you know, okay, guys, you know, this is what we're doing. We're doing a moment of silence. So, um, you know, the people on the visitor stands can't hear anything. Um, so is there any leeway in that nature, um, <coughs> given that there might be a public safety issue? I can talk about that with our attorney and see what he would direct or, or suggest. I, I don't mean to sound corny because, of course, I agree with you completely, Tracy, that the sound system is just, it, it's, it's an embarrassment. And I was at the Randolph uh, game when that happened. Um, or I've been at the field many times, if I wasn't at that game, I've been at many times where you can't hear the national anthem and everyone's talking, and so I know exactly what you're saying, and we need a new sound system. Um, but again, not to sound corny, I know that I, in my position, cannot knowingly violate any law in the state of New Jersey or in the New Jersey Constitution or the regulations that direct uh, school district administration, and I know that our board members take an oath as well uh, to uphold the laws in the state of New Jersey uh, and all other applicable um, laws and regulations. So I would not, I would not feel comfortable um, unilaterally saying, I think there's a safety problem here. I'm going to jack up the volume knowing that it's in violation of the law. Mm -hmm. I can talk to the board attorney and see what his counsel is in terms of um, if we encounter a situation in which we think that there is a true emergency taking place, what we should do. I appreciate that. And just for the record, having been here four years ago and coming back four years now, uh, I understand that we didn't succeed in the referendum, which would have solved some of these problems. But it just absolutely galls me to find out that these residents who moved near a football field that were a football field, it's been a football field, it's going to be nothing but a football field, and football is going to be played there. It's going to be played five to six times a year for home games, and we, we make it on the off chance into the off season, play will continue. And for a minimum of people, well, and many other sports that are going to, that experience the same issue, and for four to five people to hold up the enjoyment and possibly the public safety of more than a thousand people who are going to come and support the, the fans for one day for three hours is absolutely incredible to me. I think that people can take a break and understand that this is a momentous occasion for the Chathams, for many of their sports teams, in particular this time for the football team. And in their heart of hearts, they could say that for that day, to allow the kids and allow the parents to enjoy the fruits of their success after four years of sticking together and trying hard. It really is very painful that this cannot happen. And I appreciate the board's position. I certainly appreciate your position, and I understand it, and I thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it. Um, is it possible to bring, um, so let's say I'm using volume three for just a reference point. Is it possible 
if it's volume three on the home side under the press box. That if we were to get additional speakers or an amplifier of some nature for Saturday's game so that the home side would have equal access to be able to listen at volume three. Not asking for louder, just asking for more accessibility to hear. I'm not expecting a response, but I'm just yep. thinking it like literally like surround sound. It, it, and we could possibly have some one look into this and see. Yes. But my belief is if it's volume three on one side of the field, it has to be volume three on the other. Not more sound, not more mm -hmm. accessibility to sound is what I'm saying, if that makes sense. So possibly if there's a chance that we could look into renting some type of equipment mm -hmm. to help have greater accessibility to what's being announced and whatnot may, at volume three. May I just follow up? Mr. Connor. Just before, uh, when you speak with the lawyer, I, I don't, I, I, with regard to the emergency part of it, because I actually hadn't thought about that issue, and that, that's really critical and should trump uh, possibly minor infractions. Uh, so one of the issues we may want to pose to the attorney is in the event that something should occur, can the appropriate individual access the sound system to make an announcement? Quite frankly, I'd be shocked if the answer to that answer is no. Not during the game, but to bring up Tracy's point, if there's an emergency, uh, I'm willing to run the risk of a ticket if an announcement is being made because there's an emergency. And quite frankly, I'm presuming the neighbors would as well. If it's something needs to be done, and we don't have to go too far than last Friday to see what can happen uh, in terms of possible emergencies and, and getting the appropriate information out to the right people. So I wouldn't, I, I would kind of broaden the question that way, Mike, mm -hmm. just to see in the event of an emergent situation, I'm presuming we can, mm -hmm. quite frankly. I don't care mm -hmm. if we can or we can. If an emergency situation pops, we should do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Are you posing that question to Matt or Brian? Matt. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, I just wanted to clarify that that was going I to I could Matt. do both, but Thank Matt you. would be my, okay. my first stop. Thank you. Thank you. And, and back to the, sorry, the parking. Um, because we want to be able to get emergency vehicles in there, you'll have the police specifically enforce the parking. They did a great job on Cougar Night. We just need more of it. That, you know, if the parking lot has to be shut down when it's full, it's full. It's shut mm -hmm. it down and, you know, park on the street and walk. Mm -hmm. It'll be a beautiful day. Does anybody else have any questions? On we that? can have an ambulance there. There always is. Okay. Yeah, there always is. But the problem is getting out. Yeah. Get that circle. Mr. Heath, if you wouldn't mind introducing, most of us know you, but for those that don't, I don't know who is left that doesn't, but just in case. Um, Bill Heap, here tonight representing the Chatham JCs to talk about a much less complicated subject. Uh, we are up and running on our 48th annual tree sale. Uh, so I would like to announce that to TV land and uh, make sure that if you need a tree, uh, the sale will be held uh, the, starting the day after, uh, Saturday after Thanksgiving, running up through about the 22nd of December. I'd also like to publicly thank the uh, Chatham Boosters. Um, I snuck into one of their meetings uh, last month and Tracy and Rob were gracious enough to let me uh, make an appeal for volunteers. Uh, they sent around a uh, blurb on uh, uh, an email blast, and we did get some responses. So I'd like to thank you very much. I uh, appreciate your help. Um, the, all the proceeds minus our beer money uh, go to uh, local uh, civic and charitable groups in town. Everybody knows it. Uh, if anybody would like to solicit us for a contribution, we're open to that. Please just uh, send us a letter and state uh, the nature of the uh, request, and we'd be more than happy to consider it. So thank you for letting me and, and, and Bill, if you don't mind, I mean, I know you give thousands of dollars away just for the viewing audience. I mean, roughly, how much money do you give away to the community every year? Uh, last year, we gave away about $30,000. $30,000 directly back to the community, scholarships, for seniors programs, just spread, uh, you know, wherever there's a need, the JCs are there to fill it. Are you saying for our um, taping? And, 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 oh, but he did in the beginning. You guys started. <laughs> and Bill, thank you. Thank you. you. Bill, thank, thank you, Mr. Heath. You basically yeah. single-handedly kept the JCs and that Christmas tree uh, thing afloat. And, and I know the boosters stood tall for you, and, and hopefully other segments of the community will do likewise. But thank you personally for all you do, because that's a lot of money and that's a lot of time. Thank, thank you, Mr. Heath.
Any other public commentary for the first session? Jane Deflin, Chatham Township. Before I begin with what I want to talk about, can I just ask, is it possible to get a one-time waiver for the sound audio, um, just that one night, like a special exception? Well, Mike's going to answer. Not that I'm aware of. But I mean, it's a it's a law. It's not really a guideline. Okay. Well, that said, I have to agree that we should follow the law and not set the tone that we're the type of community that doesn't go with policy and following regulations. I wouldn't want to set that example. And I think it's more the sound system. Yeah. It's you know, it's a, we need an upgraded sound system. I think it would. I mean, you know, that remains to be seen. I'd have to ask. I'd have to go to Burnsville and look and see and, you know, go to these surroundings. Go to Madison because I could hear their sound and all the neighborhoods can hear it. Do they set it at three or do they just break the law? I can actually hear it as well. You know, is it just designed well or do they just one of the towns that just breaks the law and enjoys the music, you know, for the two hours that a game is going on? I'm sorry, Ms. Devlin, we cut into your time based on your question. Oh, my clock's going to start ticking now. <laughs> no, no. Okay. There's not there. a, there's okay. You know what? There's not a huge rush okay. to the mic, so Thank you. It? Okay. Well, last week I attended a program sponsored in part by the Community Coalition for Safe and Healthy Morris, which featured keynote speaker David Sheff, a New York Times bestselling author. In attendance were key people in the field of prevention, treatment, and well-being, including clinicians, legislators, law enforcement, and educators, and at least two members from the school district of the Chatham's counseling department attended. Here's a takeaway statistic. 80% of youth try drugs or alcohol by age 18, and the onset age is no longer high school, but middle school. And when asked, parents replied the number one reason why kids experimented was peer pressure or they like to party and feel high. But that was not the number one reason the kids cited when asked why they indulged. Youth stated the number one reason for alcohol or drug use was to medicate or cope with stress they were feeling. Pair this statistic with a 2013 American Psychological Association survey which found 45% of U.S. school children were stressed out by school and homework was found to be the leading cause of that stress. So let's connect the dots. Certainly to say homework causes stress resulting in drug use all the time and for everyone is sweeping and erroneous. But is change around homework within reach and doable in our schools as a means to reduce and remedy stress? Research is pointing to yes. I urge the Policy and Curriculum Committee of the School District of the Chatham, the Board of Ed, not to simply give broad responses to homework change in the district, but instead to develop specific steps. One area that perhaps could develop traction is mandatory making up of missed homework in all grades, but particularly in the undergrades when a child is sick. Really, how necessary is it to make up that one world language worksheet or English weekly paragraph that is missed by being out a day or two because of a cold or strep or whatever? How life-altering is it to miss a homework assignment at age 9, 12, or even 16? In closing, hopefully Thanksgiving break will be homework assignment-free district-wide. Even the teachers deserve a break from planning, doing, correcting, and grading. It shouldn't be considered abdicating educational duties and goals by taking time off. We all have a finite amount of time. Bloating our daily schedules with even more work in the evening, especially after an already long, vigorous, and demanding day, hijacks family time and undermines rejuvenation. We are met with challenges and stressful situations on micro and macro levels every day. 
therefore to let families come home and reconnect, to let our children step back, step away, and no respite shouldn't require so much debate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Devlin. Uh, we're going to move on to our regular agenda. There's another opportunity for public commentary after we go through our action items <clears throat> at the end, of, right after board business. The good luck this weekend. I know. Go get them. Thank you. Um, we're going to start off with personnel first, Ms. Clark. Um, I move action items A1 through 12 uh, for both. I'll second. If we just take a moment. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Grant or Ms. Clark or Dr. LaSusa? Yeah. Ann? The, um, the teacher of science that's listed here at CMS, is that to replace another? Which number? I'm sorry, Ann. I'm sorry, number five. Thank you. The teacher of science at CMS, is that a replacement for another um, teacher with their, that was there during yeah. maternity leave? Got it. Are there any additional questions for Ms. Grant or Dr. LaSusa? Seeing none, Mr. DeQuilla? Agenda item A1-12, Mr. Gilbert. Yes. Mr. Trelli. Yes. Ms. Clark. Yes. Mr. Connell. You just stepped out. He stepped oh, out. Right. You could. Ms. Crowley. Yes. Mr. Friend. Yes. Ms. Kenny. Yes. Ms. Yes. Uh, moving on to finance and facilities, Mr. Gilfillan. I'd like to move action items B1 through 15 on your regular agenda. I'll second. Oh, sorry. Uh, <coughs> a couple things. Thank you to the Booster Club. Donated $2,000 for the hockey team to be, have the video taping done for this season. Um, next is a donation to use computer equipment from the Qforma, I imagine a corporation, um, for computer items to help support our STEM at the middle school and high school. And last but not least, a La uh, Lafayette Avenue School PTO donation in the amount of $13,666 okay. for the purchase of a 3D printer and a NAO robot to support the school's design and technology for Wow, that's, big time. that's cool. Um, is that Lafayette's first nano, or is that an additional nano to, or they shared, they're shared amongst? I believe, I believe it's their first, but Karen would have been able to answer that question. Okay. It's either their first or second. I thought it was their first. Those are, can we get maybe a demo of one of those, so, you know, with? I want to she would, okay. definitely. Yeah, they've, they've been advanced. The kids have now programmed them. You know, whenever the um, design and technology supervisor can mm -hmm. maybe work us in. And if it's not till the beginning of next year, so be it. I'm not trying to put, as Rich says, another brick in their bag. Or maybe even the kids could come. Yeah, usually the, Dave Vandell usually brings kids. Very cool. And that's one 3D printer? Yes. Oh, very cool. Does anybody have any questions for... Mr. Gilfillan or Dr. LaSusa or Mr. Decola? Seeing none, Mr. Decola, would you mind? Your agenda is D1 through B15. Mr. Gilfillan? Yes. Ms. Chigarelli? Yes. Ms. Clark? Yes. Mr. Connors? Yes. Ms. Crowley? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Kenny? Yes. And Ms. Lane? Yes. Agenda item 10, A2. Thank you. I'm moving on to curriculum. Ms. Kenny? Yes, I'd like to move action items C1 and through C4 for both. I'll second. Does anybody have any questions for Dr. LaSouza or Ms. Kenny on this, on the any of the curriculum items, C1 through C4? Okay. Seeing none, Mr. DeQuilla, would you mind? Yes. Excellent, thank you. Moving on to policy, Mr. Franz. Uh, I will move item, uh, agenda item C1 uh, to G3. Second. Uh, Peter, uh, I'm sorry. 
Should, should that be uh, item two eighty five fifty? Should that be charges instead of changes? Yes. Oh, right. Yeah, sure. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry. <laughs> He's a compliance guy. He can't help him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. We'll make him go to change the change. Would anybody object to a non roll call vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Same. Passes 8 0. 8 to 8 0. Um, we now are moving on to board business. Um, does anybody have any board business they'd like to bring up? I have one request for Matt and, and Peter probably. For the December 7th meeting, and I know you're just going to meet before that, but maybe is there any way to, while you're discussing, just put up a one-page PowerPoint on maybe the items that are, we're thinking about just so we have a piece of paper in front of us and we can maybe put it up on the board and, and chat it up. Um, you know, maybe the items that you're thinking and the numbers that it may entail so we, you know, we could all see it, the audience can see it, and we can bat it around. Um, we can write up a... I'm not looking we, for we a... We have a general idea where we're headed. We have a couple things that need to be addressed or finalized. I think you can have most of that spelled out and then have kind of a if then, if then go to statement kind of... Okay, even if it's a one-pager. You know, you know, perhaps if... I think that's a great idea, actually. Maybe we should move the f meeting up a couple days. Can we do it the week before? I just don't know what... It's the, with, um, between the holidays, I'm not sure. I mean, if you all can... I, I, I got to tell you, I think it's a great idea. I just don't know if we can do that. We're meeting at 6.30 to 7.30. Right. You know, From I mean, your previous meeting, you have a 80% baked and you're just going the last 20? Yeah. Or no, is that not a true statement? Rich, um, yeah. just a, a, a uh, suggestion, possible suggestion. The uh, We were scheduling a meeting with our attorney on uh, December 2nd. He confirmed he could make that meeting, 6 okay. p.m. December 2nd. So uh, if we can get enough finance committee folks who either were planning on attending that meeting, okay. we could maybe follow that meeting with a finance great discussion. Okay, that'd be great. It's December 2nd? December 2nd. Wednesday, December 2nd, 6 p.m. Do you mind if uh, Marge sends out an email just to yep. solicit availability, um, specifically the finance committee, and if somebody has a, a jam up, maybe go to the alternate or the alternate's alternate? Sure. That's a great idea. And what time is the attorney's yeah. meeting? Six. So it would be after that? Yep. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to do before, we could try. No, 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 because it, it's hard to get here from yep. work. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, slow right. No, I'm, I'm yeah, with you. Just, I was assuming afterwards. Yeah, yeah. No, I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. It's just very difficult to get here before six six thirty from from work. So it'd probably be in the seven o'clock neighborhood, I'd guess. Okay. Yeah, I think. So we'll meet with the attorney at six. Six, and, and then, then do finance at seven. Okay. Do you think an hour's good enough with the lawyer? You tell me. You're the lawyer. Uh, let's schedule it for 9 o'clock. <laughs> 9? Excellent. No, 6, that's good. Thanks, Mike. Does anybody else have any additional um, board business? Any new items that we haven't covered, either for the weekend or nothing? Mr. Connors, nothing new? Nope. Okay, fantastic. Seeing no additional board business, we're going to move into our second opportunity for public commentary. Again, if you wouldn't mind uh, stepping up to the mic, introducing yourself. And if you could, uh, you know, keep your comments reasonable in, in a lengthy time. Say what you want, just... <laughs> sure. <laughs> the reasonableness refers to the time frame, not your content. <laughs> Fine. Uh, Jocelyn Cahoon again from 40 Barnsdale in Madison. Um, on the policy and regulation 7510, is, is that a change to what is online? Is that the reason for this new adoption? I'm sorry, I hadn't come to the previous meeting. Th there are changes to it, I'm sorry. Can you we've we, and we update policies continuously throughout the year. So we did make changes to 7510. Okay. Could you give me an idea of just some of it was just what it you was. set the field. Some of it has to do with lighting. Some of it has to do with um, um, charges. You okay. Know, how is, how is, we charge the field and uh, financially charge. Okay. And when will that be posted, posted on the website soon? Uh, to, is it there or is it tomorrow? It was posted. All of the attachments were posted on the website underneath the meeting agenda. So if you go to the district website oh, on the okay. next meeting agenda, there is a, uh, a link to all of the attachments. Oh, and okay. it will take us a couple of days to get that into the policy section. 
uh, on the Chatham yeah, website. Yeah, on, on the, okay. the, the okay. website under policy. Okay. But it was posted on Friday. That is correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Jane Devlin. Could you explain a little bit policy 5535, the passive breath alcohol sensor device? It was, it was a cleanup item and I don't it was one sentence that we edited. And that's yeah, you, yes. You took an hour to clean up that one sentence? No, we, we were very abbreviated. <laughs> Basically, that's another, that's a fancy term for breathalyzer. So we've had a policy in place uh, since 2008, maybe, or seven, about the use of breathalyzers, that the school administration may on occasion use breathalyzers um, at events with students. And we wanted to modify one sentence so that it's clear that when we are going to use breathalyzers, we'll do so in some kind of predetermined fashion, like screening every 10th uh, student who enters a, a, uh, an event, such as the big football game this weekend. Uh, or something like that. So we just added some specificity to the policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Dr. Lasuso, could you repeat again the 6 o'clock on December? December 2nd. 2nd. Is that a Wednesday? It's a Wednesday. Okay. Uh, seeing no additional public commentary, I make a motion to dismiss or to end the uh, public Board of Ed meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Against? Nobody? Yeah. Abstains? None. Thank you. Uh, we have no executive session, correct? No. no. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, as always.